I'm Vanessa Joy here for Adorama TV. I'm going to demystify how to get manual camera settings. It'll be easy, I promise. So here's my thought pattern behind manual. One, turn it on manual, obviously. That's the M function, or maybe not so obviously. Sorry to assume that, but that's the M button right here. And the second thing you wanna do when you're trying to learn how to master your manual settings is to get into easy lighting conditions. Now that's what we have right here. What we've got right here is easy light. I have nice, big, soft light coming in from here. It's lighting Juliana in a nice flat, even light that's not changing. The hardest thing, in my opinion, about shooting manual is when the light keeps changing, you gotta keep up with it. So if you're learning how to shoot manual, which if you're watching this video, I assume you are, then go for easy light that's not changing on you. Now I'm using the Canon M50 Mark II. This is an amazing camera. If you, you know, are, I mean, even if you are a professional photographer, but if you aren't looking to get into super professional gear, but want a little bit of a control, this is a fantastic camera. I adore it. I am using the 32 millimeter 1.4 lens. This lens is just a dream for portraits. It's a little on the more expensive side when it comes to the EFM mount lenses, but well worth it, well worth it. Um, the nice thing about this camera is that it's a mirrorless camera and you're going to see what the picture looks like here on the screen before you take the picture. But don't just assume the settings are correct. You want to do some things in order to change the look of your photo. So the very first thing that I recommend that you set is your aperture. Now the aperture is the one with the F here and you just tap. You're gonna see your range. Obviously this will be slightly different depending on your camera and your lens. It might not go down this low. That's why it's a more expensive lens because I can go down this low. And just to iterate the point, I am gonna go all the way down to 1.4. I choose to set my aperture before I set anything else because that's the thing that's going to affect the way that the photo looks the most. So my aperture, when I have it at a lower number, which is actually a wider aperture, you're gonna get that soft blurry background. At 1.4, you're gonna get this like eyelash, like Juliana's eyelash is gonna be in focus and maybe not her eyeball. Like that is the little tiny bit of focus, but this has great eye detection, so I'm not gonna have a problem with focusing, but I set that first. Now the second thing and the third thing that I set sort of go hand in hand and they depend on each other. So I have my shutter speed set right now at 125. I am gonna raise that a little bit just to make sure I don't have a camera shake problem just because I move around a lot. Um, I can hold the camera still, but I move, my model moves, and even if you have image stabilization in the camera, if your model's moving, it doesn't matter. So I like to be around one two hundredth of a second when I'm dealing with adult humans. Now, if I'm dealing with kids, if I'm dealing with kids, I'm like at five hundredth of a second or a thousandth because they move uncontrollably. So that's step two. Now, based on where I set that, now I'm gonna start looking here. And right now, it's definitely overexposed. It does not look good. So I'm gonna have to change my ISO. Now, I can look right here at her or I can press info and this thing comes up. This is called a histogram. This right here is showing me what's happening in this camera. All the way on the right side here, this is where my whites are. And it makes sense that there's a lot of reading over on the right side because she's wearing a white shirt, her skin is lighter. But there are darker parts of the uh, image here and that's why you see more on the left side which is your darks. That being said, it's still a little bit bright. I'm blowing out her skin, I'm blowing out definitely the white shirt that she's wearing. So we want to go a little bit darker. So I'm going to go ahead to my ISO. Let's just go all the way down to 100. I think that's too dark and I want you to see what the histogram looks like when I got too dark. That's slightly too dark, not horrible. And you can see actually, raise your hands like that again. See when more white comes into the frame, how it evened out a little bit. So you want a nice even histogram, which is gonna look something more like this when I set it to 160. That's pretty good, pretty even, but it also just depends on what you have in the photograph. If I move Juliana over and I put her against this white right here instead of the dark behind, same settings, my exposure is correct, but now because I have more white behind her, look at all that peaking that's happening right there. It's good, it's correct, there's nothing wrong with this. It's just showing me, the histogram is showing you 
a graph a reading of what is in the camera so that's what that is but that is giving me a good idea and that looks good right there now for now if you're just learning i do recommend that you set your white balance to auto so my white balance is cloudy day at the moment so i'm going to just go to auto and i'm going to go to there we go not there sorry i'm going to go to white priority like that and if you don't like the way that looks feel free to move through because i actually do like the cloudy day better here there's cloudy day nice and warm i'll take a picture so we can pull that up and then let me do one more and we'll do that oops, at auto white balance and you're going to see definitely a difference between the two good all right so one is a little bit cooler one is a little bit warmer and some of this is personal preference. My personal preference right now is to go with warmer. So I'm gonna go back to cloudy day. All right, so now that I've showed you my method to setting up the exposure, first it's aperture, then it's a shutter speed based on what you're shooting to make sure that you're not gonna get camera shake or motion blur, people moving around. And then you put your ISO where it needs to be to be a correct exposure. Now the funny part is if you're back in the film days, it's literally the opposite of what you would do. You would choose your ISO first because it was a film you put in the camera and then everything else would work around that. But now with technology and cameras being so clean at higher ISOs, you can make ISO the last thing you choose so you get what you need in the picture, the look that you want. All right, let's take some pictures. Whew, too much talking. <laughs> you want me to do yeah, actually I like this here too. That looks gorgeous. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're going to keep taking pictures of you because you're awesome. And then we're going to switch because I know you like that side better. And then she'll be looking out at the, her seemingly better side, which is, of course, not the wind correct side <laughs> for that. <laughs> this looks amazing. Great. Hold on one second. Oh, no, we're good. I thought maybe it got too overexposed, but it looks good. Nice, gorgeous. And this is working out really nicely because I am blurring out that background and I'm also kind of blowing it out a little bit too because the exposure on her face is good, but that is blowing out the outside, everything else going on. Can you try to come a little bit more to here? This is gonna act as a nice reflector. <laughs> so I don't need my reflector. There we go. Gorgeous. Love that. Also love the people in the background. So we're just gonna go ahead and yeah. And if you're shooting natural light, natural reflectors is something you want to look for. Do that again and almost act like you're blocking the sun and like look up that way. Yeah. I know you might want to learn more about posing because we've got a gorgeous model and I'm not telling her to do too much. So if you want some inspiration, download my free posing guide in the link below or bit.ly forward slash pose joy. Let's get back into this. Hand a little closer to you and a little further away from me. Yeah, that, there it is. That way the sun gets in your eyes. And then eyes right here. Yes, oh my God, right there, hold that. And then you can look at me. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Love that. Cool. All right, so what we have here is a nice natural reflector. Now, the difference, I'm gonna go ahead and change my aperture. Let's say I wanted to get everything in focus back here, which I don't because it's going to be distracting. You know, find that out. Let's go ahead and do this, setting my manual exposure the way that we want based on that. So let's go ahead. I'm going to change my f-stop first and we're going to go up and we're going to see dark in a bit. Let's just to exaggerate, I'm going to go to 7.1. I'm going to lower my shutter speed a little bit to get it to be a little bit brighter, but 1 25th of a second, I'm not really going to get camera shake. I'll hold still. And then I'm really gonna have to raise my ISO up to get a proper exposure. Probably right around there, 2,500. Uh, that's pretty crazy, it's gonna be a little noisy. But now when I'm taking a photo of Juliana, I can see everything, let's go this way, I can see everything that's going on behind her, which isn't particularly doing me too many favors. It's not horrible because she is far away from the background, but look at the difference between these two. So we're here, look how sharp these lines are in the back, as opposed to right here, you can't even tell there are really too many lines behind her. There we go, that's a better example. 
We'll put these up on the screen for you guys, obviously. But that's the difference right there. Right here, that picture where everything's blurred behind her to when we upped it up to 7.1, you can see everything behind her and it's super distracting. So let's do this one more time. I'm gonna have her go back to the position I was originally gonna photograph you in. <laughs> right here, yeah. And let me see if you just sit on the top step. Right here, yep. I think right in front of the, the thing. So this is another good example actually. So I want her in this because I like the color, but I don't want stuff looking like it's poking out of her head. So I'm gonna go back to my f-stop and I'm gonna lower it a whole bunch. Because if I take a picture just like this, let's just take one for fun. And I'll take it like I'm actually gonna take it. Nice. She looks gorgeous, but like everything is in focus. All the stuff, oops, sorry. All the stuff behind her is just as in focus as her eyeballs. And it's completely distracting. So let's do this again. I'm gonna go to 7.1 and let's lower it. Let's just say I wanna go to F. 2.2, let's go there. You can see it brightened up a bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and lower my ISO because I do have my shutter speed at 1 125th, about where I want it to be. Uh, let's go with 400, that looks like pretty good. And I can check my histogram to make sure nothing's peaking, nothing's going crazy. That looks great, and let's just take a test. It's Juliana sits there perfectly waiting. Look at the difference between this and that. Like, I noticed the branches here, they're kind of just behind her. And this is a nice flat light on nice and even bright eyes. So this is what I'm going to go with. Let's take some actual pictures. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. No, never hold the reflector, Ike. <laughs> Bad reflector. <laughs> I do have to change my, uh, my lighting settings though, because with the reflector, it kind of blows her out a little bit. So let's go down to, no, I like it. I like it. Light in her eyes. There we go. Let's go down to 320. Now I'm at a good, a good spot. This looks amazing. Beautiful. Bring your um, like sleeves up and like snuggle with them. They're fun sleeves, so it's good to snuggle. <laughs> Did it stop? Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, yes, hair, blow away. <laughs> that's gorgeous. Bring your hand that's here, bring it just a little bit like behind, kind of like on your neck a little. Yes, love that. I love your rings, they come out really pretty. Beautiful. I'm gonna shoot like I wanna shoot here. Nice, I'm gonna back up a little. Just put like one foot up, one foot down. Maybe turn a little more this way. Yeah, and then we can kinda like lean forward, get a little arch in your lower back. Yeah, that looks good. And you know what? I'm gonna have you come down one step so we're a little further away from the background and that will probably change my exposure slightly because she's closer to the light. Yep, it did. So we're gonna go down to 200 on my ISO. Ideally, by the way, you want your ISO to be as low as it possibly can be because that gets you the cleanest image. So that is a goal, definitely. Perfect. Oh, you know what'd be fun? We can lean against the railing. Get some leading lines here. There we go. Nice, and then tilt and kind of like look off that way. Love it. And then do one where you like really lean into me a little bit. Uh, like, yeah, you can move your feet however. Maybe do like um, one leg up, one leg down that we can kind of like lean in this way. Yeah, okay. yep. Love that, perfect. Cue wind, and it's where we want it to be. <laughs> nice. Awesome, then yep, bring a hand up. Cool. I think we got it, guys. Yes, so many good stuff. Let me go ahead and pull them up on my computer, show you my favorites and how I would edit these. You are about to witness the most moody editing I have ever experienced in my entire life. I pretty much went through every single one of the stylized presets that I have at presets.breatheyourpassion.com. I don't know why. I just felt like doing a bunch of stuff. But the basic toning you see me do first and then I go in and do a little bit of skin softening through the presets I have in the local adjustment brushes. Also whitening up the eyes, definitely saturating her eyes a little bit, though Juliana usually does not need any of that. Some of the color profiles that I put on the photos, 
dulled down her eyes, so I just wanted to bring them back. Uh, and then I have to say, out of all of these, which, oh, which is my favorite, I have to say the black and white, which usually I don't love the black and white of Juliana because then you don't see her gorgeous blue eyes. But uh, I, yeah, how can you say no to that? Anyway, that is editing. I hope this has helped you figure out how to set your camera on manual settings. Remember, aperture first because that's what affects the look of the photo the most. Then your shutter speed, really just to make sure you're not going to come out with a blurry photo due to camera shake or your subject moving. And then set your ISO where it needs to be in order to get blah blah, in order to get a correct exposure. All right. And oh, we talked about the histogram too. So hopefully you got a lot of knowledge out of this. Thank you for joining me here on Adorama TV. Hit like, subscribe, ring the bell. We have lots of education for photographers just like you.